Hello, you sexy motherfuckers. It is me, Base Jalern, your favorite consistent content uploader here on the YouTubes. I am here to bring you another video, like maybe a month after I made my last one. And what video would that be, you might ask, considering I promised you a collection tour? Fuck that. No, I tried, but it didn't have the right kind of low-key feral energy I'm trying to bring here in 2020, so I scrapped that shit. I'm gonna try for February. I'm gonna try for February. Maybe, hopefully, be a month late to the collection update game, but that's gonna be how it is. But I am here to bring you another video. This ain't just a lame-ass update how I'm not doing the thing that I promised I would. This is gonna be something else that I know will probably be as feral as I need it to be, and that is going to be a haul, because I have things to show you. There's a couple things in the mail that didn't arrive that I bought in January, but fuck it, I don't care. We'll just show them later. And, but let's just get on to the shit. Let's get on to the things that I bought in January, in the new decade. And we're going to start off with just regular, regular old graphic novels. If I could just control the tongue inside my mouth, I'd be able to fucking talk. We're just gonna start off strong with the better part of my graphic novel haul, and that is Sky Doll, which is the ultimate edition. Um, I fucking love Sky Doll. Sky Doll is probably one of my favorite graphic novels of all time, and if you haven't gotten on that shit, holy fucking shit, where have you been? Um, it's got everything. It's got sexy robots. It's got titty. It's got space, like space opera adventures. It's got the, the Catholic aesthetics. It's, it's got cults. It's, it's, it's got pretty much fucking everything you could possibly ask for. And all wrapped up in a neat little package brought to you by the creators of, I believe it was fucking witch. Like, yes, please. I absolutely love Skydoll, and now there is a edition where you can just read the first four parts that are currently out. I have no idea if this is even a thing that's going to be continuing on, or if it's just been dropped forever and this is just the last thing we're ever going to get. I have hope. I have hope that the story will continue, but as it is, it's fucking wonderful. This is nice. If you really want to get into Skydoll, this is a pretty ideal edition. Personally, I, I'd recommend just buying every single Skydoll thing you could possibly buy in order to get the full Skydoll experience, and this is not something I usually do, which is buy fucking everything you could possibly buy out of the Skydoll releases, but I do that here because every Skydoll release has something in it that the other Skydolls don't, like... There's a, a spaceship collection, which has Spaceship and La Crema Christi, which are a bunch of, like, side stories that kind of expand the universe and the characters a little more, and it's called kind of like a, like a prologue. And then there's the uh, Decade Edition, which has volumes one through three in it. And even though the Sky Doll Ultimate Edition also has volumes one through three in it, um... Um, the Decade Edition also has a bunch of extras. It has a bunch of art. It has, like, I think several extra comics in it that aren't in any edition. So, um, holy shit. Get, <laughs> get on that. And and then there's the, the Ultimate Edition, which is just fucking beautiful. The, um, the dust jacket folds out into a full poster, which is cool and awesome. And just fucking... Just pay attention to Skydoll. Please, please, please read Skydoll. I need someone to freak out with me about Skydoll. I need, I need a friend. Please, God, I need a friend. But, like, level, like, lowering our level of hype to, like, a fucking bedrock, we have, uh, the Chandra trade paperback, which is the combined edition of all four of these, which I also have, because... I'm a sad, sad clown, and I live a clown life. Hong Kong. But, uh, yeah, it's just the combined three. There's nothing special in here that would, uh, make you buy this if you've already bought the singles. There's nothing of import in here that makes it different from those four. Uh, <sighs> The feelings that are birthed from this fucking comic. Like, 
Wizards of the Coast, stop making comics and canceling them challenge. Like, please, God, find a method you want to convey your story with and stick to it, please. I'm tired of this constant, like, oh, we're going to do ebooks. Oh, we're going to do physical novels. Oh, we're going to try a graphic novel thing. And every single one of those crashes to the fucking ground in a blaze of glory. And we just have to sit there and take it and just watch as, as you fumble around with the thing that we love. And we have no power except but to watch and then complain about it on Twitter, which I do a fucking lot, by the way. Um... But yeah, I bought that mostly because, like I said, I'm I'm a clown. Welcome, welcome to the circus. Welcome to the show. It's just me being a joke. Uh, but I also decided to go down the large rabbit hole of other comics from Magic: The Gathering's past because I found this at a Second and Charles, and I figured you know it might as well. It's the fourth volume of Magic: The Gathering the comic featuring Dak Faden. And this is the final one. This is the Theros one. The one where, wouldn't you know it, where the, 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 the series got canned and we never found out how Dak Faden escaped the underworld, what happened with Ashiok or anything. It just ended. And whatever. I mean, I'm so used to things just fucking ending in, in this fucking series and I, I I crave the void, but yeah, I figured I'm never, ever, 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 ever going to be able to afford reasonably the Omnibus, which has all of these in it, in a nice, like, cool hardcover. That shit is never going to be within my grasp, but I'm never even going to bother, so I might as well just buy the trade paperbacks of the original Magic the Gathering graphic novel, because... I, I I live to clown on myself, and I live for sadness, and I live for disappointment. So that's that. But I have one more one more thing. I have, I have one more little thing that I got to add to to the Magic: The Gathering suffering pile. And this one, I at least got a little bit of joy out of, considering there's just a low key comedic value of really really old Magic: The Gathering products. I got uh, Magic: The Gathering. Path of the Planeswalker, Volumes 1 and 2. These comics are fucking old. They're like a decade, easily a decade old. And the art sh and this, the way the story is conveyed, the characters, everything, it shows. And the art in here is sometimes so bad, it's memeable. It is so memeable. I, I have salvaged so many um, scenes and... Uh, stuff out of these comics and have just made a whole folder on my phone full of nothing but reaction images it's just it's it's, it's a level of bad where it's you can enjoy it because it's a piece of history kind of bad it, a lot of stuff if you go far that far back enough in magic the gathering's history there's this prime very juicy point where everything that was produced was fucking so, so fucking bad it was hilarious it wasn't like it was just this pocket of activity where everything was just a mess and it was glorious and path of the plane the plat the plath the path of the planeswalker graphic novels are definitely from that era especially when you get to like the end of like the elspeth comic the elspeth arc and it's like oh this is continued in um quest for karn and he, part of your soul just dies because you you know what quest of karn is quest for karn is and you know how bad quest for karn is even though it tells a very <laughs> very of core part of the story it's just so bad everything that these comics lead into is just a mess and these comics are a mess and I love them so much and I love all of the ass shots that we get for from Jace Bellerin in in these because there is a lot of Jace Bellerin ass in 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 these a lot more than you've ever seen and a lot more than we probably ever will see so yeah if you want if you want booty I guess <laughs> Path of the Planeswalker now we're just moving on to manga because that's what I do and that's what I have a lot of. So let's just go. My hair is a mess and I don't care. Um, I got I Am a Hero volumes uh, 10 and 11, which finishes the whole series up. And uh, I don't like how it ended. I'm sorry. Call me a pleb. Call me whatever the fuck you want. I actually honestly do not know 
what everyone's opinion of the ending of I Am a Hero is. I've never actually heard anybody talk about how they feel about the ending, but I was not a fan. It, uh, like, like there, there was no way how I wanted it to end. There was no way I ideally wanted I Am a Hero to end. In fact, I couldn't even conceivably think of an ending that would have been satisfactory but god it was it was not a, it was not a fun time volume 11 was just me constantly re regretting the past how many years i i've and how much money i put into the series only to be all like oh that's how it ends okay thank you i guess woo i mean some people might enjoy it i'm not saying it's universally bad but it just didn't end the way that I would have hoped, and hooray, I have 11 chunky volumes of this in my collection, and yay, I'm so, I'm so happy. Speaking of finishing some bullshits up, though, finally, after years of just having it sitting around on my shelf for no goddamn reason, I have Inuyashiki volumes 10 and 9, 9 and 10, which is the last two volumes, which is the final part, which is, it's finally done, it's finally finished, the, the, the impulse buy to end all impulse buys has finally been put to rest. I think I've had Inuyashiki incomplete since, like, 2017, I think. Um, I think maybe late 2017, early 2018. And it's taken me this long to complete it because, uh, I had, I had better things to do, I guess. But yeah, I finally have Inuyashiki completed. Um, you're not gonna catch me collecting Gantz unless I necessarily, necessarily have to, because it's not a top priority. I... Uh, it just uh, sorry if if this if this manga haul has started off me just being underwhelmingly underappreciative of these pieces of art, but uh, <laughs> I I just want my trash, man. I'm just here for my trash. Give me my trash. Give give me my trash. Yeah, just finish. I I finished. I am a hero and Inuyashiki. I'm. I'm on a fucking roll in terms of completing shit that I've needed to complete for a while. So, yeah, that, I guess there's that. Next we have uh, If I Could Reach You Volume 3, which is starting to lead more in terms of, uh, of, of Scum's Wish, how I originally thought it would. It's not as scummy as Scum's Wish. It's, it's not as messy. The relationships of the characters don't make me as furious as Scum's Wish, but we're getting a little scummy. Just a little scummy. Just a little, little itty-bitty scummy. And and I, I don't know. I, I, I'm starting to hate characters. Finally, I'm starting to, I'm starting to catch feelings about these fuckers, and they're all making me mad. So, uh, I, I, I figured that time would come. I figured I eventually would not particularly enjoy myself. Hold on one second, what the fuck? Sorry y'all, I thought I saw a spider and I tried to play it off really cool, but I, I kept on seeing what I thought was a spider. It turns out it was just a piece of fuzz. Anyway, but yeah. I, 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 if, I, if I could reach you, it's a Yuri, I guess. And I'm... It, it hasn't reached the level of lows that NTR did where I just had to get rid of it f for my sake. But... It's not my favorite. It's it's turning out to not really be my fave. There's so much fucking drama. There's just so much crap. Crap that I'm not here for. But you know what I'm here for? 3D titties! Hey! You hardly tell but they're 3D and you can feel them. Titties! Ah, uh, it's Uzaki-chan. Wants to hang out. And she has titty. And that's it. I am a collector of fine art, and I know what I'm doing. We have uh, Tomo-chan is a Girl, Volume 6. I've been kind of holding off on reading this. I've been kind of saving it for just one big old huge binge. I think there's two more of these, and then it's going to be done, and then I'll just blaze on through it. It's. I hear it's good. I hear it's fucking good. And I can't wait to also experience the goodness, but... 
until then it, 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 it gets like an initial like flip through where I kind of like oh what are these fuckers up to and then I like don't even read it but I will eventually I just need to take the time to binge the shit out of it and trust me there's there's gonna be eventually a time where I'm actually off on a day that y'all are holding your readathons because y'all always hold them on the weekend and I'm I work on the fucking weekends what the fuck but eventually there will come a time where I will actually have time to participate in your shit and and then shit's gonna get read I mean for serious shit's gonna get fucking read next we got nurse hitomi's monster infirmary volume 10 um the series is so fucking wholesome this series is so wholesome why are you sleeping on nurse hitomi's monster infirmary is it because it's got monster girls do you think that monster girls can't be wholesome well fuck you it do they do I mean, it's also low-key horny, but, I mean, you, you honestly can't get away with the low-key low key horny shit when you're dealing with Monster Girls, but Nurse Hitomi is so much more than that. It's so much more than Monster Girl fat material. It's cute as shit. The, the stories and the characters within are just, they, they bleed wholesome. They bleed character. It's so nice. It's so wonderful, and I just absolutely adore it. With every fiber of my being, and every single time a new volume comes out, I hold a small party. Because I just fucking love Nurse Satomi that fucking much, dude. It's gone dead. It's gone dead. We got Animeta, Volume 2, the series where we watch our protagonists slowly fail upwards. Uh, like, uh, I know I mentioned this before... In, when I've showed off the first volume, and I know the point is that she's not very good at her job, and she's through her we learn about the trials and adversity of working in the animation industry. But ah, uh, it's like everybody's constantly dogging on this girl and constantly being like, "Why the fuck did we hire you? You're so bad at your job," or "Why the fuck are you here? You have no talent. You you got you got no drive, but we believe in you, and it's all like what 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 is what is the vibe supposed to be of Animeta? Like it it's it doesn't like every single time I read it, it doesn't really feel uplifting. It's kind of like, damn, just, just watching this girl get fucked with constantly by everything. And it's like, God, girl, uh, I feel, I feel for you. I feel for the main character. At the very least, I'm definitely on like the in main, in the main character's corner whenever anything, any fuck shit arises. But God, this constantly being like, perhaps you have chosen the wrong field to, to try and have a job in. Perhaps you were not meant to work in the anime industry. Perhaps you should go. And it's like, Jesus Christ, this manga is a constant downer. It's like Shiro Bako, if you wanted to feel bad constantly, that's what it is. That's what anime is. I'm very convinced. Next up is Anonymous Noise, Volume 18, the final volume of Anonymous Noise. We're done. It's fucking finished. Finally, it's over, and my ship did not happen. I'm very upset. My ship. Ah! Shoujo manga fails me again. Next, we have Konohana Kitan volume. Is this seven? Is this volume seven? I'm loving it. It's volume seven. Um, so something that has nothing to do with volume seven, but has to do with uh, Konohana Kitan overall, is that I'm looking. I'm looking at it right now, and I'm gonna show you here in a second. But something weird's going on, and it's it's not something you realize at first glance, but um. Y'all see that they totally changed the font for like the numbers on the side, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not just seeing that, like, volumes one through four are a different font from volumes five and six, right? And I'm not just seeing this. This isn't just me seeing things, right? Tokyo Pop continues to be the constant purveyors of high quality. Like, I know I, I, I'm the person who dogs on everybody who, like, goes up in arms whenever Viz changes their logo and the world feels like it ends, but it just, that, that just, just low-key bugs me. Just, oh, just low-key, it bugs me. It's all like, what? Could, could you not afford to use the font past four? What happened? Like, there, there's, we had to change our logo because we're changing our brand up a little bit. And then there's 
we forgot that we used this specific font for our numbering on our spines. It's like, come on, man, whatever. But I'm just going to move right on along to Bakemonogatari Volume 2, which is just... I've read the novels already, so none of this is, like, news. But it's nice to have a manga of the of the of the light novel and of the anime it's just nice to have more of this shit and to see what it's like from a different um piece of media it's it's nice and i honestly i really 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 like oh great's art like you can feel however you want about oh great but i really like oh great's art but oh great's pretty good oh great's pretty great yeah Grand Blue Dreaming Volume 9. Did you know that there's a live action, like, like, show or movie or something coming out? There's a live action. Holy shit. And fuck yeah. Hell yeah. I'm, I'm down. I'm so down. I'm, my body is ready. I'm ready to go. Give, give me Grand Blue Dreaming, how it was meant to be in a live action film. Just, just make it the, the, this, com complete, complete the arc of this being just Japan's answer to, like, stoner college comedies we have in the west like please make this just the ultimate bridge between what it feels like and what it could become i'm ready i'm very ready children of the whales volume 13 14 ah more children of the whales i put it off for a bit i put off collecting it for a bit obviously considering i got two volumes in this haul Ugh. but yeah it's, it's children of the whales it's just the art is good as always like fuck like if and if, if for anything read children of the whales for the fucking art because god it is stunning it is beautiful there is no panel on in, in anywhere in these that isn't just overflowing with absolute fucking goodness like get on that shit boy so i got levius est volume two i'm i'm worried about my girl natalia like my only character in this whole miserable series that I like. I'm worried about Natalia. Like, like, think, th things are pointing to her being in danger, and I'm scared for my girl. I'm scared for the one shining light in this comic full of miserable bastards, and I'm, I'm not ready for it. I'm really not ready. I'm not ready to lose. We the House Husband, Volume 2, it's funny. It's, it's funny shit. Like, there's really not much to say about way the house was a husband. I I fucking love this series. I I do. It's great. It's funny as hell. And I what I'm really disappointed in is that I fell asleep with it and I bent the shit out of the cover. Oops, my bad. That that was that's on me. That's my that's my bad. My mistake. Oops. Magical Girl Sight Volume Eleven. What the fuck is going on? Edition. Why? Why, why, in every single one of your weird magical girl manga, Kentaro Sato, do you have to include, like, time travel? My brain, I am, I am, I am, I am an amoeba, my brain is a single cell, I, I get wildly confused if you have more than one timeline, I, I am going to die, why do you have to include, on top of, like, the, all the ridiculous, like, gory, boobylicious ridiculousness that is your magical girl shit. Why do you also have to include time travel? Possums? Possums, yes. Possums, volume four. Uh, it's, it's not my favorite Satomo Nihei work. I'm particularly a fan of when he... It's, it's just... The, th the hallmarks that I like him for are in here, but they're different because his style has changed, at least maybe just for opossums. It's the, the, um, the line work is very soft and it's very fluffy in everything. The character designs are very cute and, and they're, they're very, if, if one were to assign a term to it, it's very anime, because Satomo Nihei's character work had a very distinct style, like, even up through, like, Knights of Sidonia, they all looked very distinct, 
and well, you can still, still definitely tell that they're, these are drawn by him. He, he's, it, it, it's, it's the, the flair. There's a little less flair to all of it. it. It's a little like everything's a little more soft and sketchy, and it's very, very light. His usual like, like a uh, hallmark dark tones that he uses a lot of are not in here, but. And then there's just a lot of fighting and a lot of dialogue, but not a whole lot. I, th I think Knights of Sidonia was a little more dialogue heavy than this, but the scenery doesn't hit as hard as, say, something like Blam. If you go from Blam to this, you're going to get fucked. You're going to get seriously fucked with. Like, the natural progression of things, it doesn't hurt as much if you go from, like, Blam to, like, Biomega to, like, Knights of Sidonia and slip in, um, what's the other manga that he wrote? The hardcover? I'm, I'm, it's slipping. The other one. If you slip that one somewhere in there and then read this, it not, it's not going to slap you in the balls as hard. But just, if you read Blam and then come into Opossums, it's like, what? What the f- I, I, I guess maybe my, my, my one theory, it's either it's just for opossums and that's just the style that opossums is in because it's supposed to be like, the environment is supposed to be like kind of snowy, I guess. Like, I guess that's how it's meant to look. Or this way, Satomo Nihei can produce work faster if he draws things this way. And if that's the case, I can kind of respect that. In a sense, it's still not my cup of tea as much as it used to be, but I can respect a man who, who tries to convey things either in a particular way to communicate a certain type of scene, or if he's trying to make it easier on himself because the manga industry is hell. So, yeah. Uh, I, Opossums is great. I like it, but not as much as I have his older work. It's, it's, a, it's a little different. It's a little departed from the usual Satomo Nihei canon, like, in terms of drawing style. But, yeah, that's just me. That's just my feelings. So, Watamote ain't really what it was it used to be about anymore. It's about something completely different now. Like, remember in, like, when it first started out and it was just about this awkward as shit girl and we all just stood back and cringed at both the fact that she's just pulling off all this bullshit and also, we, at some point in time in our lives, might have done the shit that she did, and we're like, ugh. But now it's just about her hanging out with all these girls who might low-key have a crush on her, and just living her best life, like, just tripping into living her best life with all these, like, hot chicks. And it's like, when did this become a Yuri harem? It, it, I don't know when, but at some point the authors were all like, perhaps let's change gears. And honestly, I can't even be mad. I'm not even mad. I'm not even upset. I'm I'm here for the Yuri harem. I'm here for my ships. I'm ready. I'm down. I like where this is going. This, this is an improvement. We got B-Stars. Volume 4, um, no context to this, so it's not a spoiler, but my favorite part of this is when Louise just pulls out a fucking pistol. Just, just, just whips it out like a dick. Just, God, okay. We have guns. That's cool. But before, before like, the climactic end to this video, because, boy oh boy, I have one light novel, and I, I honestly think it's really fucking cool. This is SCP Foundation, Iris Through the Looking Glass. Um, I'm one of those people where, where I, if I, while I'm, like, doing my work, while I'm, like, sitting down and drawing, I like queuing up just random readings of different, like, SCP files. And I, I live for that shit. I live for all, like, the weird SCP bullshit. I am here for that. And this is just fucking awesome that it's in a book. It's, like, this a bunch of these different SCPs kind of bound into this one story that is my shit i am here for it this is my brand i absolutely love it and it's volume one so this is a series and i'm very very glad i'm just here for the scps i'm here for the cryptids yes absolutely loving it i'm very very excited for volume two i'm ready to consume the cryptid energies i am ready
And finally, my comrades, the day, that the promised day has finally come. We, our, our waiting has finally paid off. We are finally going to be rewarded for our patience and all of our, all of our, all of our bitching. And that is Rose of Versailles, motherfucker, volume one. Holy shit, praise Udon, for they are the gods. At least for this month, anyway. They have finally delivered upon the bullshit that they have been promising for years and years, and for a while it was just a joke. Like, when is Rose of Versailles? We don't know. Well, guess what, motherfucker? It's now. It's 2020, and we are living our best lives with this beautiful fucking hardcover, boys. It is thick. It is hard. Just like a dick. <laughs> but, yeah, this is a fucking classic. It's 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 got like stage plays and movies and anime and we finally have it. I can finally hold it in my hands. It's not a joke anymore. It's not a meme anymore. It's here. It's wonderful. It's beautiful and we love it and we just love to see it. Um but yeah, um praise Udon for they are their our new manga gods. Um now we just got to wait for Sugar Sugar Rune. Where the fuck is Sugar Sugar Rune? You, I hear I've heard no words about Sugar Sugar Rune. This is Sugar Sugar Rune Erasure. Where is it? Just just quickly to speak on the quality of the Rose of Versailles hardcover. I feel it's most akin to uh the Full Metal Alchemist hardcovers. It's probably that level of quality because no one if I hear any of you comparing this to the uh, Gundam the Origin hardcovers, surely you have never held one of those in your hand. It's it's a level above that no manga is ever gonna reach, but still, Rose of Versailles meeting the Full Metal Alchemist hardcover level of quality is still very nice and we should appreciate it. You should appreciate it, I'm appreciating it. I am deeply appreciating it appreciate she 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 with my body and soul and yes anyway that was my pseudo intellectual um manga collection not collection fuck this is this is a haul not a collection the collection tour is coming later i swear to god i'm gonna get it done eventually i just need to film it in a way where it doesn't fucking bore the shit out of me i'm trying to make a brand here and that brand is just a messy bitch and that's what i am and that's what i'm doing and that's what i'm here for and but yeah, that was my haul for January. There, it, minus a couple of books, but fuck it, I don't care. Um, we're gonna bring some, maybe see, maybe some shit in February. I don't know. Fuck, it, I I could make five videos. I could make none. Who knows? Not me, and certainly not you. But I'm glad that you stuck around for whatever the fuck this has become and whatever the fuck it's going to become later. And thank you for watching. Um, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Thank you for coming to my YouTube channel and watching me spin. Um, until then, I will see you all in the next video, whenever that is. Um, catch you later. I'm gonna go and rewrite shitty novels. Bye.